Okay, looks like everything's set. Go ahead, have fun. Yeah, thanks. And welcome to this talk about sustainable computing. My name is Cornelius. Um, I've been uh, around for a while. And uh, this is a topic which actually is uh, dear to my heart because it's it covers a combination of different things. It covers um, why I'm in KDE for a good part because of idealistic reasons, um, but also because of technical technical challenges, interesting solving interesting technical problems, um, and also covering uh, this this idea that um, yeah we, we we can do more with the community than than we can do alone, and uh, sustainability is something which is um, I'm, I'm using the term here in a pretty broad um, sense. Uh, how do we uh, use resources we have? How do we satisfy our needs um, in a way that future generations can still um, fulfill their needs as well? And uh, how can we get there in the context of computing and how KDE can help to get there? That's what I want to talk about in the next uh, 30 or 40 minutes. Um, we have talked about that last year at Academy in a more informal way. We had a both session um, about this topic. And uh, I will now give you an update what has happened so far, where we are today, and uh, what we are going to do in the future. So sustainable computing, uh, why are we talking about that? Um, what, what is that? If we look at what computers due to our environment, um, how, we, how, how they impact our life, and also how they impact um, our future ability to have the same life, uh, we have to look at different um, aspects. One is um, energy consumption. So obviously, computers uh, use a lot of electricity. And um, th this, these are two graphs from, from a scientific study about um, yeah, elect elect electricity usage of communication technology. So this, um, in the study, the communication technology is this broad range of computers, be it servers, be it um, desktop systems, be it phones. And um, this is a prediction how much the impact will be of ele electricity usage in the future. So this goes to the uh, towards the year 2030. And there's a, um, they call it worst case scenario that Okay, that electricity usage of computing technology could go up to something like 50% of um, the global electricity usage, which, which is um, uh, an enormous amount of energy. Um, so there, there are different scenarios, of course. This is about predicting the future. That's not, that, that's not always easy. Um, and there are different scenarios. In a best case scenario, um, if we do the right things, then we actually might uh, end up with a situation where we don't use much more electricity um, in, as a fraction of um, total electricity, electricity usage um, in the future. Uh, but there's clearly a broad range. And for the expected case scenario, um, that's something uh, on, on the right graph, you see that in absolute terms, um, that's a huge growth expected. So this is something which will affect, um, of course, um, yeah, our, our uh, yeah, the amount of electricity uh, we use, the amount of energy we use, and what computers have an effect. So what that means is um, not that easy to say. Um, I mean, we can say that use, uh, huge, huge usage of electricity, um, of, of energy in general, that, that's something which will affect um, our environment in some way. Um, of, of course, depending on from which sources this electricity comes, it has a different kind of impact. Um, if it comes from sustainable, um, renewable energy sources, then the impact on our climate is probably lower than, than when it comes from um, <clears throat> Uh, other resources, and uh, so it's it's not easy to tell what what exact effect has uh, th this has um, unless we have real numbers. Um, but what we can say is that it will have an effect that there will be um, an increase of usage um, because computers are everywhere. We know that uh, we're using them every day. Everybody's using them, and uh, we need to do something to keep that under control. So this is the energy aspect. There's another aspect. Um, if we look at uh, electronics we use, um, this is a picture. Uh, it's, it's a nice sculpture, actually, um, an art artist project, the Wee Man. 
So the waste which comes from electronic and electrical uh, equipment. And uh, this, this wee man is, is a seven meter high sculpture um, built from 3.3 .3 tons of uh, waste, electric, um, electronic waste. And that's about the, um, yeah, the waste uh, one person produces, in this case, in the UK. So th th these are the numbers. And, and you see that that's a lot of waste uh, which, which is produced there. And this obviously has an impact on, on the environment. And um, so the question there also is what, what can we do or what, what does it mean to produce um, so much waste? And the third aspect I want to look at is um, that's more focused on software. That's the question, how much control do we actually have when, when we use software? What, what impact does um, software has on how, how we live our life? And uh, one, one of the typical examples there is you, if, you, if you look at printers, um, if you want to print a piece of paper that uh, supposedly is a pretty simple thing, you, you just do it and you have a driver which converts your data into inks, ink on paper. Um, but if you use software for that, um, you might end up with something which is quite complicated and, and you get a lot of functionality you might not even need and you might not care about the fax functionality. You might not want the integrated uh, shop to buy a new ink. Um, and this is also an example where software is really controlling um, the, the use of the hardware. So uh, even if you have a good printer, um, the software controls um, if you can use it with the ink you bought for it and um, also when it will stop you working with um, with uh, um, the ink you have bought. So this is an example for yeah, control about uh, software and uh, how, how you can control your uh, your usage of, of computers um, in, in a way um, that uh, you can uh, do it in a sustainable way. So the question is, can we do something about this? How can we fix some of the problems maybe? And this is if we are looking at this from a very high level and a very global point of view, so there are the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Uh, they have defined these uh, 17 goals, uh, which cover all kinds of areas. And um, there are a couple of areas which are interesting um, also in our context, if we are looking at computing and software and hardware and so on. So this obviously has something with, to do with consumption, with energy, um, also with um, yeah, other aspects of society. So this is the very high level, um, but we, we can go a little bit further down and look at it in a more concrete way. And th the question is, um, what's the role of software there? So we are talking here in the KDE community, obviously we are a software community. So how, how can we um, uh, approach this uh, question? And one, one thing which has to be said is that um, hardware and software can't really be separated. I mean, computers don't work without software, software can't um, work without hardware. Um, so the, the, these affect each other. And the architecture and the design of our software um, has an influence. It, it determines um, how, how the hardware is used and also how much resources uh, are used. And it, it determines, um, at least indirectly, the energy consumption. It's not the only influence, obviously. I mean, also the efficiency of the hardware itself plays a role, uh, but the, the way how software is written has an influence there. And if we look at the um, question of electronic waste, uh, then we also have this um, a big effect of software that um, you might need new hardware, not because your hardware is broken or outdated or not good enough anymore, but because your software um, requires new hardware because it might uh, use more resources than before or it uh, might use new features which uh, weren't uh, there before. So uh, we have this effect that hardware often becomes obsolete uh, because of the software it, it runs on it. And then also the question, um, a lot of restrictions are actually not hardware restrictions anymore, but software restrictions. So the way how you use hardware and also how long you can use hardware is not um, defined by really the uh, the life of the hardware itself. So you rarely use a computer until it's really broken. Um, often you replace it for other reasons um, because um, of software restrictions or software requirements. So if we look at that, um, we can say um, software matters a lot in terms of uh, the effect on sustainability in general and concrete uh, questions like resource and energy usage. Um, and it also matters how software is done. 
So it's not only about what software to use, but also how the software is applied and how the software is developed and in which direction software is developed. So then obviously in KDE, it's not enough to just recognize the problem. We ask the question, what can we actually do about this? Is there a way how, how we can have an effect here and contribute something to, to better solutions? And if we look at KDE's vision, uh, which says um, we strive for a world in which everyone has control over their digital life and enjoys freedom and privacy. This control over our digital life, that, that's something which I think um, resonates quite well with the idea of sustainability. So there's a lot in there and I will unfold that a little bit and show you in the next um, couple of slides um, as well um, how this has an even more concrete application in, in this area. Also, one thing we can say that KDE technology actually is quite efficient. Um, it's in the domain we are, we are writing mostly desktop applications. Um, um, at least that's our origin. Um, we, we write them as native applications. The technology we use with uh, C++ and Qt, uh, that's technology which usually is quite, quite efficient. So um, there are some studies, for example, about um, uh, resource efficiency of programming languages. And uh, C++, as you can see here, comes up at the top with, with a pretty good um, factor. And there are other languages, like if you look at more modern languages, which are also now often used on the desktop, for example, JavaScript, for example, other languages, Python, Perl is uh, one, one of the, on, on, on the last places here. Uh, they, they use inherently more energy just because of the way how, how they are. That doesn't mean that this is really an exact measure and there are certainly also ways how to uh, write efficient code in, in many languages. But we can say that in KDE, our technology, um, the, the tendency is that, that, that we actually can be quite efficient and that it's not that difficult to, uh, to write efficient software. And we have Linux as, as an open and efficient platform. Um, I mean, we, we know that Linux um, has been around for a long time and uh, one really also of the good and also prominent use cases often is um, and, and was in the past, if you think of uh, install fests and stuff like that, to get um, Linux running on old hardware to uh, make it available, for example, for people who can't afford new hardware or just to make use of um, computers you already have. So you don't have to buy a new one because uh, other software would require you to upgrade to uh, bigger hardware faster with more memory and um, everything. So KDE is in a good position um, there. And uh, yeah, the other aspect where I think KDE can have quite an effect there is because it provides leverage. We, we have many applications. Um, we have many different use cases. We have many users. Um, if we look at, for example, what Alesh presented uh, this, this morning about uh, the, it's, it's all about the applications, all about the apps. Um, so we have a lot of users and even the users we know that that's already quite a number. And, and there's certainly a lot of users we don't even know about. And uh, if we think of the, the role we have there, um, if we improve our applications in a way that they save a, bit, a little bit of energy or uh, make, usage of resources in a more efficient way. Uh, this might have a small effect if you look at just one application, but if you look at many applications and multiply this by the number of users they have, um, this can have a huge effect. And that doesn't mean that it's sufficient to solve all the energy problems, um, but it's one, one of the things uh, which can contribute here. So, um, given that we assume uh, we can do something about uh, this, um, how do we do it? How can we actually make a difference here? And I want to present you three projects in this area, which um, yeah, we have been working on um, for quite some while um, already um, in the concept stage, also in a little bit of implementation. And the last project is something which will um, uh, is being prepared and will start in the future. And these are three areas. Uh, the first one is the FOSS Energy Efficiency Project um, with a nice acronym FEEP. Uh, this is about measuring, measuring actually um, energy efficiency. So we have data, we can quantify um, what we use there and where we can change things to improve the situation. 
The second one is the Blue Angel label. Um, you might also have heard about that. Uh, this is a certification which demonstrates um, that uh, your software actually is uh, done in a sustainable way. And I will tell you more about what it is and how, how it works. And the last one is uh, the Blue Angel for free and open source software. That's that's a new project um, about more about the community part, about spreading the word, about engaging others, about helping others to uh, also uh, be more sustainable in their uh, in the way how they do their computing. So let's dive in. The first project is FEEP. What what is it? What what's the goal there? What we want to achieve there is that we want to quantify energy efficiency. So it's easy to say, okay, this this application uh, appears to consume a lot of energy. I mean, sometimes it's obvious if the fan of your laptop starts to uh, to make noise, uh, that's an indication that um, energy is used. Uh, but what actually uses the energy and also how, how you can maybe affect it and change it, that's something which is um, yeah not so easy to answer if you don't have numbers you can rely on. So for, for that, we need to measure this, um, and we also need to measure it in a way which is repeatable so that we can actually do comparison, um, uh, th that we can also uh, watch that over time or with different uh, implementations, different versions. And uh, if we make this transparent, uh, then it can actually become a criteria we can use for other purposes to tell what is sustainable, what is uh, um, what is energy efficient, um, maybe features, what is energy energy efficient architecture, what is energy efficient design, um, and there still is a lot to do in this area. So it's not 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 clear what what the answer is there, but we have to start somewhere. I think. And one important part of that also is that uh, we, we need to develop the tools or, or use the tools which are already there uh, so that we can do that automatically. And it's uh, something which can become a part of our normal development uh, environment. And we can use it as uh, criteria for um, yeah, how good our software is in the end. I want to present one um, method how this can be done. So this is a procedure which was developed as a research project uh, from, from the Uni Trier in Germany. Um, it's about sustainable software design. And they designed um, a measurement um, framework which can be used to measure the energy consumption of uh, software. It's not that easy, actually, because uh, there are a lot of different parts involved. Um, so this um, is the first step towards that, which uh, is aimed at desktop software. Desktop software, because there you have one computer, and you can actually measure the energy consumption of this computer. And um, if uh, you don't have dependencies on, for example, servers or other components, then this is a good measure of um, what uh, specific software is uh, using. And the way how this is done is um, they they, provide, they define a scenario where you measure software um, in different scenarios. So you create a, a baseline measurement um, over time. So this is the line which basically the computer uses when when it's uh, simply on without any software running or not not the specific software which we are looking at. And um, then there's a second measurement. Um, that's uh, the the second line here. Uh, that's the idle manager, idle um, measurement. So when you start a piece of software and it does nothing, um, it will consume some resources, it will consume some energy. Uh, but um, if there's no activity, this will be pretty constant. And then the interesting part is um, using um, a standard scenario, what you typically do with a piece of software, and then measure how the uh, energy consumption develops over time. And you see this in this curve. Uh, where, yeah, according to different activities, then different uh, amount of energy is used. And you can actually measure that uh, by observing how much power the computer actually is consuming. If you put a device um, basically at the uh, power adapter of the computer, um, you can um, get pretty uh, yeah, hard numbers about uh, the consumption. And you do that over time. Um, you do that over. Uh, you do that a couple of times to to create averages, and uh, collect some other system statistics like memory usage, um, processor utilization, um, hard disk activity, network activity, stuff like that. So so that you can also put that in context to to then tell uh, what actually is happening there. 
yeah, and if you collect all this data, um, you can create reports which um, um, summarize this. Um, also here, there are some, something like an average um, energy consumption or total energy consumption if you integrate over this curve. You, you get uh, numbers you can then use uh, for comparison and also for transparency. So this is a procedure which was defined in this research project. Um, and we actually have some measurements um, of KDE software using this um, uh, method. Uh, these were done by uh, students at, at the Umweltcampus Birkenfeld. So that's uh, the, the institute at the University of uh, Trier where also the, this measurement method was developed. And um, yeah, thankfully these uh, students have done some measurements on KDE software. Um, so I will show some graphs how, how this can look like. And this is only one graph. Um, this, this is the actual um, energy uh, consumption. Um, so how much power uh, the application is consuming in, the, in a standard usage scenario. And uh, this example is ocular. So you can see over time, um, there's a standard scenario where you open a file, you put uh, uh, this file into presentation mode, you um, go forward a couple of uh, pages, um, you invert the view, uh, you zoom um, out, um, you zoom in, change some pages again, invert the view again, and you can tell um, in, in the graph what is happening here. So these, these uh, bigger spikes, uh, these are the uh, view inversions, uh, the, the smaller spikes, this is when, when you uh, go over different pages. So you can tell what is happening there and you get an overall number about how much energy such a usage scenario um, then uh, consumed. A similar man, uh, measurement for another application, K-Mail, um, also done by um, uh, another student at, at the Umwelt Campus. Um, uh, this is uh, another usage scenario um, in the context of K-Mail, so opening some mail folders, um, composing, sending mails, replying to uh, three mails. So these are the bigger peaks here. So opening these mails, typing something, and then sending it out over the network that, that actually consumes. Uh, um, apparently, it, um, uh, quite a bit of energy. Um, I mean, the no absolute numbers are still quite low, of course, because this this is one mail. But by repeating this measurement a couple of times, you get this average where you can actually tell, okay, the, these actions consume um, uh, this um, amount of energy. And uh, of course, there are more graphs uh, which um, collect uh, the different, um, um, yeah, also resource uses. Resource um, utilization scenarios, and uh, you will see here um, that, uh, for example, the energy consumption correlates uh, quite well with the processor um, utilization, and um, you can see that uh, if um, a mail is sent, then there's a, a spike in network traffic. So Krita is another example, um, also um, a use case uh, where you look at uh, different operations in Krita, editing pictures, and um, you can see, for example, uh, there's a big peak at the beginning where you open the picture and then there are some operations done, drawing operations which don't consume as much energy, and then there are some group operations which consume more energy. Um, so if you look in detail at these scenarios and the measurements, you, you can actually tell which actions um, um, have which effect. And again, you get this number you can use for comparison. So, and then another measurement, um, I'm sorry, the attribution is not correct. So this also was done by Francisca who did the um, ocular measurements. Um, this is a, a little bit newer measurement where she compares um, not a single application, but uh, different operating systems and has a more global usage scenario with downloading applications, installing them, copying files around and so on. And this is a comparison between uh, Linux and Windows. So it's interesting to see, it's it's quite similar, but there are some differences. In some cases, Linux is better, in some cases, Windows is better. So th this would be interesting to look uh, more into it. And I also have to say that this is an Ubuntu system, so it's not a KDE desktop. So that also would be a nice uh, uh, research project to look into that and see um, if there's a difference, if maybe Plasma is more effective than um, uh, the, the GNOME desktop on, on Ubuntu. So these are a couple of examples um, how, how you can do um, these measurements. Um, and one question um, I want to ask in the context of this um, 
uh, FOSS energy efficiency project is? What, what if these measurements could be part of our usual operation? So what, what if we could integrate them in um, how we do software development? And we could um, create another metric we use. I mean, we have metrics like we, we make sure that our tests pass, we look at bug counts, we look at translation statistics and so on. So why not also look at energy um, consumption statistics and make sure that our energy efficient doesn't uh, degrade over time and new versions uh, consume uh, too much energy to, uh, compared, compared to older versions. So we could maybe make this um, quality gate. And uh, I think it would be a nice motivation also for optimization. So getting some of the peaks uh, smaller, maybe getting the, the absolute number smaller. If you measure them, um, then you have a good way how to also optimize them. And making this data transparent to users uh, would make it uh, very easy for us to um, yeah, also talk about that and give users a choice what, what software to use and have good arguments to use uh, the software which is sufficient. So this is a technical part about really looking into the data and uh, making sure that we have uh, yeah, the ways how to, how to measure and decide about that. Now I want to talk a little bit about the Blue Angel, which comes from, from a different direction. Um, the German people will know uh, the Blue Angel. Um, it's actually uh, something, an eco label from the federal government of Germany. It's it's really old. It's it's more than forty years old, and it was um, created to uh, yeah, indicate products which are designed in a way which is uh, friendly for the environment. And in Germany, you see that label on a lot of different products. Um, it, Obviously, for 40 years ago, computers were not such a hot topic as they are today. So this, this is about stuff like paint, uh, uh, but also completely different things like, like ships. So a very broad range of products. And um, the, the label, there, there are uh, criteria for each product, uh, category, um, uh, what it means to be environmentally friendly. And uh, then according to these criteria, um, you can get the label to indicate that um, your product is um, done in a way which uh, fosters uh, sustainable consumption. So you can read about that. Um, it's a German label, but um, all the documentation is also there in English. And um, the criteria, I think, are quite general, uh, valid. So it just makes a lot of sense to look at that, not only from a German point of view. And last year, um, they introduced um, a category for resource and energy efficient software. So this is a new category. Um, there's a great presentation actually given by Marina Köhn and Eva Köhn. They, they were um, instrumental to establishing this um, uh, category for um, software in, on, under the blue label. And um, I recommend to watch this presentation. It's, it's, uh, it really gives a, yeah, a good background and details about that. And uh, while it's in German, uh, there's an English translation available, so it should be accessible to everybody. The focus of this um, criteria is desktop applications. Um, um, server and mobile will be added in the future, but for now, um, uh, there has to be a start somewhere. It's um, about desktop applications. And uh, the criteria are categorized in three areas. Um, the first is resource and energy efficiency. The second is potential hardware operating life. And the third one is user autonomy. And I will tell you a little bit more about what that actually means. So if we look into resource and energy efficiency, they use um, for these uh, Blue Angel criteria for the Blue Angel certification, actually this mythology I presented before um, about the sustainable software design. Um, so uh, part of the uh, application for the Blue Angel label is to uh, provide measurements um, according to this procedure and the data which is related to that. And you have to document that, put it into standard format so it can actually make be actually be made uh, transparent. And um, uh, th this is the energy efficiency part. The other part um, is about the potential hardware operating life. So making sure that um, you don't have to yeah, buy new hardware because uh, your software requires that. So part of the criteria is that um, the energy consumption of new versions of your software um, shouldn't increase um, um, over time. So a new version, there, there's actually a limit, so it can increase a little bit, but um, it's, it's not supposed uh, to increase a lot. 
So th this makes sure that on old hardware, you can actually run um, your uh, uh, software for, for a long time. And uh, part of that is the definition of uh, reference systems. So they have specs for systems from 2015 to 2019. Um, so, so these are reference systems you can use to do measurements to make sure that you have um, this, um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that, that, that you have it in uh, available on old systems as well. So one of these systems could look like this. Um, this is one of the reference systems from 2015. And um, yeah, we can do measurements of this and our software runs very, very fine on it. User autonomy is an interesting part because that's not so much about the technical specifications, but more about making sure that users have control, that the data formats um, allow interoperation, that the software is transparent, um, that it's available for, for a longer time, that you are in control of what you install and whatnot, um, that it's free from advertising and stuff like that. So, so this is something I think which is very familiar to us. This is basically a, a lot of the ideals of uh, free and open source software reflected in this uh, user autonomy criteria. So if you look very close, um, you can see that actually these criteria, um, there, there's a hole um, shaped in the form of KDE. KDE fits in very well. We are desktop software. We have this uh, software autonomy, user autonomy um, as uh, something which is in the core of, of what we are doing. So this is something which um, fits very well to us. Um, KDE software qualifies for that in, in a direct way. And there is demand for this. Um, so th this, uh, this is um, a blog about um, a decision by the city of Dortmund, which um, uh, they recently did. But they said for, for new software, they will actually require that it um, fulfills the criteria of the Blue Angel for software. So if they buy new software, they look for that. If there is software there, which is, has this label, and that's one of the problems we have at the moment, nothing is there yet. So, but KDE software could be there. Uh, I said, this, this is uh, really a good match. So where are we with, uh, with, with this? And this is something I've worked on for, for the last um, couple of weeks and months um, to get our applications in shape there. So the application looks like this. Uh, they're different. You have to fill some forms. You have to uh, put in the documentation. You have to do the energy management. So based on the energy measurements uh, done by the students uh, in Trier, I created the first set of applications here. Um, the one for Ocular is almost ready. Chimail and Krita are next. Um, we have the data for that. And uh, we are looking into measuring KDevelop, Kate, other KD software. I mean, there are many applications. And we have a little bit of tooling and infrastructure available to help with that. And with KDE EV, we have an organization which can actually officially um, do the applications for that. So we are almost there with that. Um, here's a work board in a repository. You can look at the link, um, what's, what's happening there. So can we do something about this? Can we make more sustainable computing possible with KDE? We can. With KDE, if we can shave off a bit of energy multiplied by our users, or if we can spread it amongst our applications, if we can make the idea stick, we can actually make a difference there. And this brings me to another uh, project. That's the last of the three, the Blue Angel for FOSS. Can we do something about this if we look at KDE? Yes, I think I've shown we, we can. But the good thing is we are not alone. There are others who are also supporting this cause. And we're actually starting with a project supported by a grant of the German Environment Agency starting in July now um, to support sustainable development, um, software development by promotion and application of the criteria of the Blue Angel in the free and open source software community. So this is about spreading the word and helping others to also do that and getting a community going to uh, work towards these criteria, to work towards more sustainable computing. And we are in contact there with other organizations, the FSFE, the Roundtable Repair, or the Document Foundation. They all have interest in there. And obviously, there are many more communities which would fit in there. There are more desktop applications which could benefit from um, yeah, actually the qualification um, of uh, yeah, yeah, energy consumption, but also these other um, uh, criteria about user autonomy and um, similar things.
So let's do something about this. Um, I think we have the means, we, we have a very good situation, um, we, we have the, the right projects, we have the right people to do something about this. So let's work towards sustainable computing. And let's carry the flag for sustainable computing. I think KDE, EV and KDE in general, uh, we have um, a lot of very good resources there and we have, I think, the opportunity to make a difference there. Um, and to do, yeah, to, to go into this um, in more concrete terms, like what I described, measuring energy efficiency, making this part of uh, what we consider the quality of our software. We also have areas where I think we don't have to do a lot in terms of changing our software or, or in introducing new things, but we can de just demonstrate how our software extends hardware life. We can demonstrate how our software preserves user autonomy. It does that, I mean, we know that. Um, if we could prove that by putting a Blue Angel on our software, I mean, that would be even better. So, so this is one of the things I think which can help us there. And then of course, spread the word, helping others. Uh, that's something where we can have this um, yeah, bigger effect. So I would like to do that. I, I work on that for, um, I think, a little bit more than a year now. Um, and um, I love to continue on that. And I would love some more help on with, with that. So I'm, I would be really happy if people join me and uh, we create uh, more momentum there. And there are a couple of things which I think, uh, these are also smaller things. Uh, th these are not all huge projects. Um, for example, definition of standard user scenarios for your application, uh, that can be quite simple. And then finding a way how to automate that, that might also be related to other testing tasks you do. Um, then also the measurement itself, that's also interesting, how to, how to do that, how to execute that, how to uh, create reports about that. So this goes a little bit more in scientific areas, uh, but also then other things like just documenting um, our user autonomy. So making sure that in our documentation, it's clear uh, what our privacy um, um, statement is. So linking that in the documentation, making sure that users know that they are in control if they are using our software, what is happening there. So we, we could do a lot there and these can be small tasks, these can be bigger tasks. So I would like to invite you to um, yeah, join this uh, effort and uh, do something about uh, sustainable computing. Where do we get together? Uh, we have a mailing list, energy efficiency at kde.org. Um, so there's not a lot of traffic there yet, but this is an obvious place where we can meet. Um, there are also two repositories, one for the energy measurements, uh, that's the FIP repository there, that's meant as a pretty open project. So across applications, maybe even across communities. Um, and there's another repository where we make the work transparent um, for creating these applications. And for more discussions about that and uh, answering questions and everything, um, I scheduled a BOF for Tuesday. So I would like to invite you to join this as well and then talk more in depth about what we are doing there and what we can, can help there. Yeah, in the end, um, we are filling this um, hole in the form of uh, uh, KDE. I think we, we can do a lot there. So let's do something about it. Let's go towards sustainable computing. And that's it, what I wanted to tell you. And so I think we have a few minutes left for questions. So I haven't followed the Matrix channel, but uh, yeah, so Adam, you have to help me out and repeat yeah, if yes. there was something <laughs> there we <laughs> should answer now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cornelius. Indeed, we do have a couple of minutes left and we do have some questions here in the, in the widget. Um, so going from the top of the most score, scored ones. Uh, Kevin has looked at the repositories and he has found the documentation, but not really something actionable or easy to run to measure the apps. Um, how far are we from actual off-the-shelf tooling for these tasks, for example, uh, would be needed for CI? Yeah. Um, so the the tool which which was used for the uh, measurements, um, which were done by the students at the Umwelt Campus, that was um, um, Aktiona, 
however you would pronounce it. So there's the configuration for that is in the feed repository. So this automates basically clicking buttons, moving mouse, typing in. Um, so you can use that to um, repeat uh, um, um, yeah, a usage scenario and play, play that back. So it, it's a little bit fragile. So there are certainly better ways how to do that. I think especially for our applications, um, probably the, the people who are familiar with applications can find better ways how to automate that in a more reliable way. So at the moment, we have the, these um, Acciona uh, scenarios configuration. Uh, there also is a little bit of experimentation. So I, I tried to do that with uh, X2 tool, which is just as fragile, <laughs> but uh, in a different way. Um, uh, and uh, there, there are certainly other ways how we could do that. So th this is one of the topics of research um, also. Um, um, so help with that. Automating that is, is very welcome, um, but also looking at these existing scenarios and the configuration, which is there. OK, thank you very much. And I guess one more uh, won't hurt. Uh, this is coming from Nate. Efforts to reduce consumption via improved efficiency generally encounters the Jevons paradox, which is the increased efficiency simply incent incentivize more usage. How do you think we can address this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a very good point. And um, as I said, I think it's a very complicated uh, topic also. N not all usage is the same. So if you use, for example, like green energy, then maybe consuming this energy is not as harmful as if you don't. And, and the, this paradox, of course, also is true. And I mean, you see that with software. I mean, software hasn't become uh, uh, much faster. Uh, it just has become more powerful. And, and we do things in maybe different ways than before, although the hardware has become much, much powerful in, in, in over the past uh, couple of years. So um, I think uh, we have to look at it from a holistic perspective. Um, I think important is measuring things. So we have data, so we can actually tell um, what is happening there. So we can tell our software is becoming less efficient um, or more efficient. Uh, but then also this other, the more social or more idealistic um, uh, approach to also look at these softer factors, look at um, what, what is reflected as user autonomy in, in the Blue Angel. But uh, I think we can also make this uh, the bigger uh, yeah, idea. So um, maybe consuming less uh, something which can't really be justified from a technical point of view, but you can find other ways um, how, how, how you can look at that. So I think if we put together all these different factors, the different views, um, the, the values we also have, I think in the KDE community, we have strong values which go into this direction of working in a way that, that we can work in a sustainable way. Um, I think we, we can put this together. It's not a guarantee that we will solve it and that <laughs> we will magically eliminate uh, waste and, uh, and energy consumption, which is not necess necessary. Uh, but I think putting a focus on the topic, uh, following the idea, doing something about it will, will help us uh, at least have a little bit of improvement. And that, that's what counts, right? Small improvements put on top of each other, they, they give the big improvements. Yeah, thanks. Uh, one more? Sure. OK. This is coming from Niklas. Uh, regarding that certification, how does resource intensive software like 3D graphics or video rendering fit into this scheme? I would assume they are inherently more demanding. Yeah. Uh, we have to say that for the um, a big part of of the certification in the current state is about making things transparent. So, so measuring um, the consumption, putting data, and uh, publishing that. It's it's not so much about um, absolute numbers. So, um, it, it actually says in the criteria that. Um, uh, they, they are not judging if uh, an, an application is consuming an absolute um, maximum number of energy or something, but that there's, that, that there's made an effort to make this transparent, to measure it, and so on. And of course, depending on the use case, you, you need more energy. I mean, if you do um, complex calculations, um, you need more energy than if you just show something and nothing happens uh, with, with this. So um, I think that that's... The, we are not there yet with really doing these comparisons across uh, maybe different software categories even. 
Uh, but it's more about uh, creating awareness and um, being conscious about how much energy you consume and what effect your software actually has. I mean, this whole idea of that software is uh, a major factor in your energy consumption is something which is not not obvious for for, uh, for some people or in, in some some um, uh, also in some ways of thinking. Um, you, if, if you think about it, I mean, you see it. You have a nice computer and you use it, and you're happy that your battery life is uh, uh, becoming longer with a new device. Uh, but then looking at what what actually the data says and if if the way how software is done has has an effect on it, um, it's it's not easy to tell at the moment because we just don't have looked at that yet. So from this point of view, I think um, making data, uh, making measurements, making data transparent, and then looking at it, and then you can judge in different categories, I mean, what, what is necessary. And if you can see, okay, you have this, the game, which is just as good as the other game, but only consumes 10% of energy, maybe that's an indication for some people at least to prefer this uh, game, which uses less energy. <laughs> Yeah, makes sense. Um, okay, we are out of time. Thank you very much, Cornelius, uh, for the presentation and for answering the questions. Thank you. Great event. Really, I'm really happy and proud to be part of it. And join me for the both if you're interested in deeper discussions about the topic.